After following them for four months all over the country, it's now time for me to review my topics for Miss Universe Philippines this year. Tonight, a new Miss Universe Philippines will be crowned, so it's best that I have to say this as early as now, that whoever eventually wins, I hope we get to finally set aside our differences and rally behind our new queen. Because she will eventually represent us in Miss Universe later this year, so it's better that we give our new queen the breathing space that she needs as she jumpstarts her year-long reign. So it's important that we keep supporting our girls, but not at the expense of another one. So speaking of the girls, let's finally talk about them. I'll be listing down my final top 17 ladies who I think should win Miss Universe Philippines this year. And so here they are. So I've got 17 ladies for my list on today's cadet. So let's start. At number 17 is Kayla Jean Carter from the Filipino community of Northern California. You know how much I love this beautiful lady ever since she got introduced in Miss Universe Philippines. She created so much huge splash during her introduction that all eyes have been on her since then. She really has stellar beauty and communication skills. Yun nga lang guys, Tana. I cannot say the same thing for her pasarela skills, which is understandably her Waterloo, given she is only a newbie in pageantry. So sayang talaga guys, she has all the goods sana talaga. Her Marachua gown during prelims was, a, was definitely a showstopper. And I hope she gets to redeem herself in case she makes it to the semifinals cut in a little while. And now we go to my 16th spot and I'm giving it to Christina Chuck from the Filipino community of United Kingdom. I just feel so sad that I am ranking this lady so low given this lady's level of beauty, communication skills, and ability to perform on stage. All throughout this season, I've seen this lady grow to become such a sensational performer. I saw her tenacity to improve her pasarela skills on stage. I saw how persuasive she was every time she got the microphone to speak. And during my interview with her months ago, Ito na, pero ito na. However, I feel she just gave a very safe performance during preliminary competition, especially in the evening gown segment. The color of the gown, silver, kind of washed her out on stage, given the LED background color as well. So it was definitely a missed opportunity. And now let's go to my 15th spot, and I'm giving it to Matea Mahal Smith from the Filipino community of Florida. I wish, talaga guys, I just wish I can bring so much hype and support to this lady as I feel she really has all the qualities of the next Miss Universe Philippines title holder. Smart, authentic, confident, humble. She's really a charmer in her own right. And all these qualities are seen in how she performs on stage all the time. For, for one, her prelims, for instance, her prelims performance was really good. Her sexy red gown was a hit for me as she was able to display her fitness on stage. It was really a great choice. Her confidence talaga, her confidence level is really soaring, especially when it comes to showcasing her athleticism in a wide range of activities like the swimsuit competition during preliminary competition. Now, she is not afraid to really showcase her authentic self. And I just wish people are just as appreciative as I am in terms of acknowledging how savage a competitor Matea is as a candidate. And now we go to my 14th spot and I'm giving it to Bianca Tapia from the Filipino community of Hawaii. I'm so glad that this lady had a moment during the preliminary competition. She was really serving it on both rounds, especially in the evening gown segment where she came out looking like a Jess like Jessica Rabbit in this beautiful red glittery gown made by Eran Montoya, which took the socks off everyone in the audience. So I thought she really had a moment there. So, nakikita niyo yun? Finally, napapansin na rin natin siya. She's finally being noticed in this year's competition. And I know, yun nga lang, I know I may be ranking her solo right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if she makes it past top 10 tonight, just to prove everyone how much she has grown in the competition. And now we go to my 13th spot, and I'm giving it to Alexandra May Rosales from Laguna. This girl has been so consistent from the very beginning, and I feel I am underestimating this lady, given her overall presentation since day one. Ever since talaga, wala na talaga akong, wala talagang pinakitang mali or wrong styling, in every single event, itong si Alexandra. So, tuwing nakikita ko siya, she's always, she always looks well-styled and all, and it all continued all the way until the press presentation 
or the preliminary competition where she was really a knockout in both rounds. So watching her from afar during that night, the other night, she was really glowing on stage, which she really aided pa with her killer catwalk skills. And I also love how she improved in her communication skills for this year's competition. Siguro at this point, all I want from her is to assert herself more in interviews, like how strong she is when it comes to her catwalk. And now we go to my 12th spot and I'm giving it to Cyril Payumo from Pampanga. I wish I could rank this lady higher given how I have seen Cyril does it all the time in every event that I have attended in MUP this year. Admittedly, she really has strong stage presence and that was evident in her swimsuit performance during the preliminary competition. But the same stage presence cannot save her when I finally saw her in her yellow or mustard-colored evening gown with tussle designs which I really feel did not make her a standout. So I just feel sad for her at this point. She really did not st stand out for me. So I hope she gets to switch to a better gown tonight. And now we go to my 11th spot and I'm giving it to Kimberly Street from the Filipino community of Australia. I have noticed this lady since the press presentation with her regal bearing and commanding presence on stage. And so she has been consistent since then. Her preliminary performance was the bomb. I just love the way how she looked that night. And I just can't believe how she was so oozing with, with so much sexiness in that red sexy gown. Talagang styling niya dito was just so perfect. You know, apart from the fact that she created so much impact on her swimsuit performance too. Now she really is the most beautiful Miss Body Beautiful for me. So then, given with what I just said, maybe I need to rank this lady higher in my list. And now we go to my top 10 and number 10 on my list here is Raven Doctor from Palawan. I feel I am underestimating this lady in this position with, given how strong and powerful her entire performance during preliminary competition the other night. I thought she was so solid and striking in her presentation with that commanding stage presence and impeccable pasarela skills. In the evening gown, for instance, I felt like she was a Miss Venezuela in the making, walking down that, walking down the ramp in that glittery dress which she complemented with a hair bun. And if she continues to be this strong tonight, I won't be surprised if she will be able to elbow a lot of front runners coming to top five. So, wow, I just couldn't believe I am saying this for an 18-year-old lady. I wouldn't mind her going all the way to the top given how she has blown me so much, blown me away in everything that she has done in MUP, whether walk-wise or communication skills-wise. And now let's go to my ninth spot and I'm giving it to Anita Rose Gomez from Zambales. I really want this lady to succeed too in this year's competition given how she has captured our hearts with her beauty, humility, most important, and killer pasarela skills. Siya talaga yung candidate, in my opinion, who really worked who really worked really hard to be taken seriously in this year's competition given we only know about her famous waistline, diba? Right? So she really made us fall in love with her empowered being during the closed-door interview and stunned the whole audience in this blue crystal field evening gown inspired by her hometown's Mount Pinatubo crater. So I thought she had one of the best gowns and performances of the night. Naplakado talaga ang styling. And... Even if sa totoo lang guys, and even if she wears this for finals tonight, I really wouldn't mind. It's really that memorable. Siguro if I were to nitpick lang, I would love for her to change her hairstyle in swimsuit. The huge hair extension is making her face look so big in her otherwise small body frame. And now we go to my eighth spot, and I'm giving it to ito na ulit, mababash na naman ako, Alexi Brooks from Iloilo City. Forgive me again for ranking Alexi this low in my list, but I just didn't like the way she moved and styled herself during the evening gown round. That silver gown with gold shades on her shoulder blades didn't really wow me because the cut design alone is very similar to the gown that she wore during her national, during her national competition. The gold shoulder pads or the gold... Uh, the gold design here all the more emphasized her broad shoulders, which kind of went against the femininity of her gown. So I didn't like how she moved in her evening gown. That there was just too much hand gimmickry, which I feel was just too much. 
And so I wish, how I wish you could take inspiration from Miss Universe Jamaica 2014, Casey Fennell, where she just let her elegance and simple red dress do the talking to define her stage presence. Or if not, project a hard version of Grace Jones with her athletic background. That would be a lot stronger to see Alexi on stage. Because Alexi, in my opinion, is so strong as a lady or a candidate that I would love for her to be more authentic with who she is as a person every time she comes out on stage. Because every time she comes out on stage, I am really getting confused. Now, she's very masculine, but her dress is very feminine. So, napapansin nyo, there's no more cohesiveness. However, I have to praise her for not overdoing her Shaney's twirls, Shaney's inspired twirls during her swimsuit turn. She just did it subtly to complement her authentic persona here. So, somehow, she listens to criticism, and I like that. So, at this point, I'm really sad that I am ranking Alexi this low, but who knows? And now, we go to my seventh spot. And I'm so sad to be giving this to Tara Valencia from Baguio City. She is another lady whom I expected so much from, from the other night's preliminary competition. But I feel she just gave a very decent performance, in my opinion. You all know naman how much I love Tara for her overall styling and presentation since day one. Pero, lang. I was just wasn't blown away by her performance, especially with her evening gown turn. I thought her whole look there did not compliment her. First, ito na, blue isn't really her color. And the cut of her gown, especially in the middle part, did not give justice to her sexy figure as it made her look so big. Now, it's too strong for a color which I feel does not complement Tara's youthfulness. And then, her hairstyle pa also compounded the problem. So I know a lot of people are saying that she is so young and raw given that she still has to develop physically more. But it's not a solution for her team to age her a bit with this kind of hair styling and gown color. So that's why I didn't like it. Because the styling that I am wanting for Tara to, to be seen at is how Miss Dominican Republic Andrea Martinez looked like during the preliminary competition of Miss Universe 2022. Nayel Ming with colored gold or champagne gown with match that would match her beauty. Or she could even wear Miss Carino's yellow or golden dress during the preliminary competition. So sa swim naman, I thought she did find there and held her own against the other favorites. Actually guys, sa totoo lang nasasaktan talaga ako that I am ranking her low here because that face is really a knockout, especially in the international scene. Kaya talaga makipagbardagulan talaga sa mga Latinas abroad. But given everything I have seen during prelims, plus the need for her to improve her communication skills for now, then probably a seventh spot isn't too bad for her to reflect and come back stronger in the near future. And now let's go to my sixth spot. So near yet so far. I'm giving it to Stacy Gabriel from Kaintarisal. Oh, God knows how I badly want this lady to win Miss Universe Philippines this year. However, Stacy has always been rocked by styling issues ever since day one. And sadly, she still encountered the same problem with her gown choice for preliminary competition the other night. I feel the black gown with the linear design would make her look tall. But the opposite happened, and it made her torso look short instead. So I did. I also. Tapos ito pa. I also didn't like how she styled her hair here. The high pony was just too much. Her elevator heels were really scary. Even the pair of gold earrings that she even used here, which was a contrast to her black outfit. So I just feel she just you know. So I just feel that she could have you know played with a lot of pop colors because let's face it black is a color that is so hard to pull off and when it comes to her pasarela skills it just didn't wow me because it's something that we have seen from stacy before so so alam mo yon, as much as i'm really i really want to put stacy higher in my list i just really can't but you know what Given everything that I have said about Stacy, one thing that I really truly admire about her during her preliminary performance is that how she looked more like a movie star than a beauty queen. She really didn't pretend to be someone that she is not. And I'm so happy that she was able to retain that kind of authenticity. 
in her presentation. And now, let's go to my top five. And number five on my list here is Chris Tiffany Hanson from Cebu City. I really feel this lady is so safe in the top five. You know, because you know naman how I have been so stunned by this lady's transformation for Miss Universe Philippines this year. At the beginning, I just find her so-so. But over time, I have seen her growth and transformation in losing more weight, getting more and more fresh, and beautiful by the day given her hectic schedule for the pageant. So, naiintriga talaga ako. She must be taking my Rai tablet every day to get that glow. So, I mean, she's really glowing. So when it comes to her on-stage performance naman, it's the same thing. Ang linis-linis ng lakad niyan, akala mo talagang professional model sa stage maglakad. Pero yun nga lang, I feel she can do so much more and damage and just let it all loose once and for all in the biggest pageant competition of her lifetime. Kasi just like what a follower of mine here on YouTube sa says, she really has to finally learn how to let loose and unleash her inner vixen for a change if she really wants to win Miss Universe because it's really Miss Universe or nothing for her. But other than that, you can never go wrong with this lady's facial beauty and relatability, especially when we talk about her communication skills. And now let's go to my fourth spot and I'm giving it to Chelsea Manalo from Bulacan. The ultimate dark horse of the competition has finally arrived and she is none other than Chelsea Manalo from Bulacan, ladies and gentlemen. For months, I have been lamenting how this girl has not been getting the hype that she deserves given that face caliber and killer catwalk. And so I'm just so glad that she finally had a moment at the most important event of the competition so far. Nagrabe. The moment she came out on stage to do that swimsuit turn, ang lakas-lakas talaga ng dating niya with that Naomi Campbell aura which is a result of her straight hairstyling. And then she continued that kind of hairstyling in her yellow evening gown with, with a huge skirt at the bottom which I feel did not complement her modeless figure. But anyway, it's not about the dress but how one carries it. And so she carried it well. Chelsea, guys, I'm telling you, is not a fluke in this year's competition. She has been peaking at the right time. She has been standing out in a lot of sponsor shoots for quite some time now. And nothing beats me than seeing her getting the attention that she really deserves just in the nick of time. And let's go to my top three. I'm giving my third spot to Victoria Velasquez Vincent from Baco or Cavite. Out of all the ladies in the preliminary competition, the other night, it was her that gave me the wow moment the most. And she has been giving it to me since day one. I know this is an, an unpopular opinion, pero iba talaga si VVV when you see her on stage talaga. Now she just has this divine presence I can't explain. I don't know how she has been conjuring this up, but there is always some sort of a presence whenever she comes out on stage. So this is exactly what happened to me when she came out in swim the other night. And I just absolutely love her hairstyling here, which really made her look like a mermaid. However, as much as I am wowed by her performance here, as I watch her on video again, I realize her eye makeup here is lighter compared to the color of her skin tone. So she has to fix all these little things, little foibles, foibles tonight. Na alam mo yun, and get the right makeup to make it even with her skin tone. Tapos, I also want her to take her time in walking and give us a moment, especially when she is doing her swimsuit turn. Kasi parang ang bilis-bilis. For her evening gown naman, oh my gosh, it's another story altogether. I am so in love with her fur and amato gown here. I really like this whole butterfly design on her gown because it made her look so soft and I feel it reflected her metamorphosis as a Miss Universe Philippines candidate since 2021. And so I feel there is a story to it behind this beautiful gown. Na talagang so I was just in love with this whole package. Na she was no longer being fierce with her facials, but was just was really making an effort to smile more. And I like that. Alam ko para sa inyo kulang pa rin ang pag emote ni VVV, pero ewan ko ba talaga guys, iba talaga ang presence ni VVV talaga on stage. Gandang ganda talaga ako sa kanya dito. And now we go to my runner-up of this year's MUPH. And I'm giving it to Christy Macari from Taguig City. So I am getting a lot of hate for hyping her and DVD too much at this point of the competition. But I will still stand by with everything that I had seen from Christy Macari, most especially 
here. Her stage presence is just so strong that even if she hardly moves, especially with all your complaints, it is still enough to haunt and impact you as a member of the audience. Iba talaga siya sa, sa live viewing. The turquoise blue gown made her look like Versace from 2000 and I was so enthralled. Kasi in a sea of glittery gowns, she really stood out. Talaga. Iba kasi talaga yung nanonood ka ng live sa venue, but what I, what, but what I saw was really something else. Na talagang kapag hinilera mo talaga siya in a group of girls, nagsa-stand out talaga siya easily because of her height. And for me kasi, Christy comes from an era where it's the walking that is always doing the talking. No fancy footwork needed, but it still looks elegant. Reminiscent of the Miss, Miss Universe Philippines days na aces ang queens ang lakad. Yeah, sila Janine, sina Ara. And so, kapag tinitignan mo yung lakad ni Christy, ang linis-linis talaga, which I really find refreshing, na she has the waist, the height, the beautiful skin tone. So, adding too much of it will be too much of a distraction for us to appreciate how beautiful her body is. Yung S-line pa niya lalo. So, alam mo, she doesn't, I reckon she doesn't have to pull off all these kinds of tricks employed in her catwalk to make her a standout. And so now I get why Mark Bumgarner chose this gown for her na ang simple lang ng strategy lang talaga nila. Na if I were to compare her walk talaga, it's more similar to Venus Ra than Shaney's, than how Shanice did her walk in Miss Universe last year. Kasi di ba yung lakad ni Venus sa evening gown niya before? Walang halong antics talaga. The walk was just beautiful, whereas Shanice, there were a lot of twirl, twirls, hips, waist, as she is coming from an era of pageantry it at a different time where everything is so different. So even if Christy is already 34, she doesn't, she doesn't really look her age. Her face, body, and height will pretty make us go all the way to top 5 and 10 if she really ends up representing us in Miss Universe later this year. And finally, we go to the moment that you all have been waiting for. My, o my number one overall pick to win Miss Universe Philippines. And I'm giving to Atisa Manalo from Quezon Province. Sa hinabahaba ng prosesyon kay Atisa lang talaga ako babagsak. And I feel the crown is already in Atisa's bag at this point in time. She really is the obvious choice to win this year because the moment she lets it go and fumble her Q&A tonight, she could lose everything. But for sure, she wouldn't let that happen. Because what I love about Atisa all throughout her journey here is her ability per to perform on stage. I am so blown away by the evolution of her catwalk, especially during her swim turn. Na she were, alam mo, nakita niyo, nag-slow-mo twirl, tapos biglang nag-half nag twirl on the other side so fast. It's something that I haven't seen before. And I was so stunned. For whatever it's worth, guys, she could be the CJ Opiasa of this batch. Now she was working that stage and so she was giving us so much life in that swimsuit turn which she also did in her evening gown but with subtlety this time around. Siguro my only issue about her performance is her evening gown. I feel it was something that I have seen from before and I just wish she just wore the crisp white gown that she had worn during her preliminary interview earlier that day because I thought she really looked more arresting there. But overall, itong minor issue ko tong kay Aitisa, can easily be fixed because for all I know, for all we know, she is probably reserving her best gown for tonight and that's something that we should all look forward to. So at this point in time, I also would like to ask her team na sana wag na siyang masyadong ipatan pa kasi mas angat talaga yung beauty niya pag hindi na siya pinatat, pinapatan ng matindi. But again, pinatan na naman siya ng, ng konti sa prelims. ba? Tapos ano pa? I wasn't also sold too much about her closed-door interview performance. Her answer, lalo na to the proverbial Miss Universe, why should you be the next Miss Universe question, was so bitin na marami pa rin talaga akong bagay na nakukulangan talaga sa kanya. But again, if she wins tonight, she will have a good six months to train, hone her skills, find the right look for her, and I am confident she can do all that. Kasi ganito rin naman ang pakiramdam ko noon nung nanalo si Misha when she won her title at the start eh. I wasn't really fan of her red carpet looks after her crowning moment. But slowly, slowly converted me to a fan when she finally, when she was already competing in El Salvador. But setting that aside guys, I believe crowning at Tisa is the smartest choice for our MUPH this year. Kasi she has the 
She has the international experience, the fan base, machinery, funding to go head to head with the Latinas and the other contenders from all over the world who also have a wealth of pageant experiences. Atisa also has that commercial face and marketability too. So if we also think about the business side of things, it also makes sense why she would win the crown tonight. So there you go, guys. What do you think about my list? Bakit ko nga ba pala tinatanong yun? For sure, marami na naman kayong maiinis sa list ko. Siguro yung mga fans lang ni Atisa ang natutuwa dito sa content na to. Kasi talaga, Atisa has, regardless of my issues about Atisa's styling, consistent talaga siya eh. I mean, yung mga flaws na kailangan niyang i-address, napaka-minor lang. Madaling ma-address. It's something na nag-improve naman yung communication skills niya. She has a team to back her up. She has the machinery. So, alam mo yung talagang uh, marami siyang connections to give her the best gowns as much as possible. So, everything is slowly aligning in Atisa's favor right now. So... I'm just happy that I was, if ever she ends up winning tonight, I, I'm just so happy that I was able to somehow see the growth, the transformation that she has been, uh, that she has been getting into getting ready for Miss Universe. All right, guys, I hope you had a fun time listening to my commentary for my, for my overall pick for this year's Miss Universe Philippines pageant. Marami pong salamat sa inyo for following me throughout my four-month-long coverage of the pageant. I really appreciate all your support and at the same time, your constructive criticism and bashing because natututo talaga ako sa inyo whether you like it or whether you believe it or not. Marami talaga ako natututunan sa inyo. So, thank you, thank you so, so much. And see you all tonight. If, if you get to see me, say hi to me. Hindi ako... Hindi ko kayo hindi papansinin. Okay? Let's have fun tonight, guys. Another new queen is about to be changed. Another, another beautiful lady's life will be changed tonight. So, let's all rally behind her as she pursues her ultimate, ultimate lifelong dream. Alright, guys. Marami pong salamat ulit. Until my next video. Bye!